Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to the Buffett and Beyond Research Guide to the Computer Program. And you want to be able to use this computer program so that you can tell your clients which stocks are above average stocks in their portfolios and which stocks are below average stocks in the portfolios. And, of course, we go over usually a stock a day in our daily newsletter. And we go over stock of the week on a Saturday in a video. And we go over the stock market recap and also the ETF letter. Those are three videos that come out every Saturday and our daily letters that come out that talk about certain stocks that clients have asked about. And the Guide to the Computer Program is your way of looking up a stock by yourself and you can see right there in the numbers as we'll see going forward whether that stock is good or above average or below average. So let's get right to it. Now, this is for professional money managers. So you, we want to welcome you to the Buffett and Beyond Stock Selection Computer Program. And we want to select stocks with high clean surplus ROEs. Why and what is that? Well, you learn all about the clean surplus ROE in our daily letters and in our videos that are contained on the site. And of course, in our book. The book is a nice, easy read. Get it from Amazon. And folks, you'll be all caught up with the clean surplus ROE, which is totally different than any other money manager uses out there at the present time. Now, our 2002 doctoral dissertation shows that portfolios constructed with high clean surplus ROEs outperform portfolios of stocks comprised of lower ROEs. What does that even mean? Well, in other words, the above average stocks outperform the below average stocks, and that's common sense. But how do we measure the above and the below average stocks. Well, we use the clean surplus methodology, which is the only link between finance, accounting, and investing. Folks, there is a difference between these three areas of finance. Okay, let's go right to the computer program, and you are going to notice down on the bottom here, there are three areas, and the main one that you want to go to is the stock list. And up here where it says clear filters, we're going to change that to reset. And folks, you want to reset all the time because every time you make a change in here or you search for something, you'll change something in here and you want to clear filters to start all over again. So one of the things that we like to do is I like to go to the three year return on equity. Now, all of these buttons here mean something. Most of them are to sort. So we'll go over them, each one, because we have some neat new things going on in here. Let's go to the three-year return on equity and go from the largest to the smallest. Now, everything resets, as you can see. So what do we have at the top? We have a stock that nobody ever heard of. Oh, NVIDIA. Yeah, one of our, one of our best stocks out there. And it's been in our portfolio for about four years now, I think. And we like to look over here, recent dividend. Remember, we are growth stock investors. And we don't like growth stocks that pay big dividends out because that means they're not putting enough money back into themselves in order to grow. So NVIDIA looks good, three-year ROE, and we come up to 2024, 20, 2025. Now remember, the average stock has a clean surplus ROE of around 13%. So here are the averages up here. So for 2024, it was 10.3% average return on equity. This is the clean surplus return on equity. For 2025, they project a 15.3% ROE, clean surplus ROE. So we look at the three years, and folks, you can start any way you want. You can come over here to 2025 and go from the largest to the smallest and look at stocks here. But one of the things I like to do is I like to go to the three year, largest or smallest, and then I just scan across here and make sure that everything looks pretty good. Recent dividend zero, years to pay debt, very, very important. 
Now, Buffett's rule of thumb on the years to pay debt means that if you take all the money a company is making and use it to pay off debt, how many years will it take to pay off debt? His rule of thumb is five years or less. Our rule of thumb is about three years or less. We don't like to see a lot of debt because if interest rates change, then all of a sudden the stock gets killed or the stock goes up and it's just too much to worry about. So we can, let's look at NVIDIA. And we look across here at the ROE. Ten-year ROE doesn't look good, but we're going to look at that in a second. And meanwhile, these other numbers look pretty good. So let's click on NVIDIA right here. So we're clicking on the name of the stock. And it brings us to the full. And you can click any place to get rid of this dark line here. Just click there. And we can see that, well, in it had lost money for a few years in here. It's been around a long time, so we've had time to clean up the owner's equity, which you don't see on your computer, uh, but I see it on mine because I need the owner's equity, and I have to change it sometimes. But we're looking at the net income, and the net income has grown over the years, and that's really what we want to see. So in some years, it actually paid out more in dividends than it made, and that's how you get this negative clean surplus ROE. But once we saw it going positive like this, and we see these earnings going up, now net income represents the clean surplus earnings, and we've... We, discuss that in the book. We discuss it in our daily newsletter. Net income means clean surplus earnings, and you take traditional accounting earnings, and you take away non-recurring items, and we want to get at the core business of the particular company so we can compare one company to another company. So we look at this number here and we say this is totally out of sight because our rule of thumb, again, the average stock about 13%, 13.5%. Our threshold is 20%, and we can see NVIDIA over here under ETFs is in the technology. That's the XLK ETF. It's in the semiconductor ETF. And it's in the top NAS NASDAQ 100 stocks, which is represented by the QQQ symbol for that ETF. So it's in all three ETFs. So we look at Nevada and we say, okay, this looks pretty good in here. And then we'll come back down here to stock list because we go to the name Nvidia, click on the name Nvidia, and it brings us right to big charts. And it is set for one year, and it's set against the S&P 500 index right in here. So over one year, with the market up about a little over 25% on this particular day, we see NVIDIA is up almost 200%. Now you come back over here on big charts, and you can set this, and I do, or I, I shouldn't say set it, but I change it to five years, which I do. And has it done over five years? Put five years in there, and then you draw a chart again, and you say, whoa, <laughs> okay, 2,500%. It's my kind of stock. <laughs> and all right, let's go back, close this out up here, and we'll go back. Let's, let's take the next stock. Let's take Wind Resorts. And Wind Resorts look pretty good around here except years to pay debt 18 we don't we don't care for that but let's hit win resorts anyway and see how it's done relative to the market whoops because it has had and remember this is set for one year let's go to five years so we click on five years and we compare the chart to there okay let us come down here just in case you haven't played around with big charts and I use it a lot in my daily letters. It's, let's compare it to another stock. How about Amazon? We put a comma in and then AMZN so you have to know the symbol and let's put Microsoft in there. Comma MSFT and we're on five years and let's draw the chart. So we see up here Microsoft is leading the way. Again, black line is always the S&P 500. 
So over five years, the S&P 500 is up 90%, which is fantastic. Of course, in a normal year, or over, let's put it this way, the average return on the S&P 500 on the index itself, not counting dividends, is about a little less than 10%. So over five years with it up 90%, we can see that we might be a little bit ahead of ourselves in here. But anyway, that's not the point of this, is we look at the blue line here, and the blue line is Amazon. So Amazon has outperformed the S&P over five years. Microsoft is up here. Microsoft has done very well. And what's all the way down here? Win Resorts. So when we close out here and we go back to the stock list we say okay wind resorts we don't care for you that much but let's look at the chart of wind resorts and we come here to the chart of wind resorts and we look at the net income and we can see that for three years in a row 2022 2021 and 2020 it lost money so we don't care for stocks that can lose money like this and of course it was due to COVID and all the restrictions you know they shut the casinos and especially in Macau which is not too far from Hong Kong it's right across the bay there it's their gambling area that's where all the gambling takes place in Macau and uh, they were shut down for quite a while so anyway you know, we don't care for that. We saw what it does over five years, and we just don't care for it. So this is how we get the na stock names. And remember, clear filters all the time. you got to clear that, folks, to get a reset this whole thing in here. Let's go over here to our ETFs. These are our favorite ETFs. They are the S&P ETFs, and they cover an awful lot of stocks. Let's hit on the QQQs. So we hit on the QQQs, and then it shows up right in here. And so now you come all the way over here to the right, and you see all these stocks are in the QQQs. And there should be about 100 of them. And let's go over here to three-year ROE, and it's already sorted from high to low, but we'll make sure sort from lar largest to smallest. And we have NVIDIA. We have CrowdStrike. We have Melly. We have Super Micro Computer. We have some stocks that are really good and gee, just happen to be in our portfolio. Uh, Paychecks, I'm going to come back to in a second. Broadcom, yeah, it used to be called Avago. Palo Alto, Amazon. Uh, Astra, we have to look at this again because we don't have it in our portfolio, but let's take a look at it. And we click on the name, might have to click on it twice, and we see it has a pretty nice ROE. And we kind of like that, but it had a high ROE down here, and all, it's also in the drug industry. Now, I'll tell you what, I don't care for drugs that much, because in the drug industry, if you don't have a patent on something and then the patent runs out and so these stocks are quite volatile but let's go back to the stock list and see how a z n has done relative to the market so we click on a z n and we see over one year remember this always resets to one year black line is always the s p 500 one year it was doing per fairly well and then all of a sudden it dropped out of bed and that's what i talk about when it comes to drug stocks let's see how it's done over five years we come up here and we click five years hit draw chart and five years it was performing as well as the S&P 500 and we don't want a stock that performs as, uh, that performs as well as the S&P 500 we want stocks that outperform the S&P 500 all right so let's go up here let's close out and that won't do it so let's go to paychecks paychecks is one that's on here that looks like it should be in our portfolio we look at paychecks and we go to the full chart and we say, this is our kind of stock. This is really, really neat. The dividend is 3.2%.
So we look at the retention rate. How much of the money that it's making does it put back into itself? We want to see 100%. We, we like anything between 80 and 100%, but we would rather see a company that's putting all the money it makes back into itself because that indicates that it's a growth stock or not. So we look at this and we say it's only putting on average 22% back into itself in order to grow. So the market looks at that and says if the stock's not growing, why grow? or why use it. So we go back to the stock list and let's go over to the name of the stock and we click on paychecks and we see that over one year, again we always default to one year, black lines the S&P 500 and it's performing almost as well as the S&P 500. Let's go to five years. Now you can go to any number of years that you want and we can see that it's performing as well as the S&P until this past year and it has been underperforming. So we don't want a stock that performs just as well or even underperforms. It's a good stock and it pays a 3.2% dividend but for us we're looking for growth stocks. We're looking for stocks that outperform the S&P 500. Let's go back up here. Let's go to Melly because we just put that in our portfolio last year. And this is Mercado Libre and it's the South American Amazon. <laughs> so, or Central and South American Amazon. And let's see how it has performed. Well, it's performed as well as the S&P this year, but let's look over five years. And we're going to hit five years, draw the chart, and we can see, yeah, it's done very, very well. You know, this is 2022 in here. It was the year that the market didn't do very well at all. The, the S&P was down 19.6%. NASDAQ was down 34%. So without hedging, our portfolios would have been down about 17%. Or, or, or I'm sorry, 27%, which is less than the NASDAQ, but more than the S&P. But don't forget, we hedge. We use dynamic hedging. We use static hedging, too. So that's the one real big plus about having your portfolio managed is to get involved with hedging. And therefore, you don't have to worry about it. You're out playing golf, and I send out an alert that says, hey, time to put on hedges. And... Uh, you're in the clubhouse having a beer and you don't see it and then if you do you you don't get to your portfolio right away but a money manager who follows our strategy clicks the button and you're hedged so right in here this was 2021 and in 2021 we can see the s p the black line rose very nicely in here over 20 percent when it outperforms in fact I think it was about 26 percent that it rose in 2021 and folks whenever you see that kind of rise you got to say next year might be a little bit tough in fact as I'm recording this 2024 we're almost at the end of 2024 we're up 25 percent I worry about next year a little bit that's when hedging might come in very nicely now okay 2022 2021 2020 2020 was COVID, and there it is right in there. And right after COVID, Melly just took off. Why? Because everybody was ordering online instead of going out shopping because the malls were pretty much empty. And you can see the double top in here. And we saw this happening, and we got a lot of portfolios. We suggested to the money managers following us to put some cash or hedges and we like hedges of course so we hedged the portfolio some portfolios we suggested to go into cash and they did and they're very very happy <laughs> so all right let's get back here and again we want to clear filters because don't forget we're in the QQQs here so let's clear the filters or the reset button which we're changing this to reset let's hit the reset button and then we have all our stocks all over once again and folks that's how we use the computer program and I just want to come over here one more time to stock compare now let's look at some of these stocks up here we have Melly we have CrowdStrike we have NVIDIA and let's look at stock compare and well we have AMD here we have Chipotle here 
AMD over here. Let's do CrowdStrike. You have to know how to spell the stock symbol. CrowdStrike. And yeah, then we can see this up here. And let's look at Melly. Click on Melly. And now if you want to compare four stocks, we say, whoa, CrowdStrike was underperforming when it came public. And now it's doing really quite well. Macabro, Macado Libre is doing very, very well. Had the time, a tough time in 2020. And then 2021 has started shooting up and has done very, very well. Chipotle is also in our portfolio after it had, remember it had a little E. coli in some of the salads or something. And the stock really hit the skids. It was doing really well. See down here? See down here? It was doing really, really well. Then it went down when it had all that problem. Went down longer than I expected, about five years here. You know, it didn't do so well. I should, uh, and the stock did drop. And then all of a sudden it has come roaring back. AMD Advanced Micro is in one, is in our portfolios. Didn't do too well this year. Let's go back to the stock list. Let's try to find AMD. Now it's right here, but if you want to find a stock symbol, you come over here, you click on this, and I, where it says select all, I just deselect it because I know the stock symbol, and it's AMD. And it comes up AMD right here. I say OK. It comes to the top. We go to Advanced Micro and just click any place to get rid of that black line. And we can see Advanced Micro has done very, very well. It hasn't done well this year. Well, let's go back and find out exactly how well it has done. Let's click on the stock symbol. And it takes us here. And you can see it's had a tough year. Let's go over five years. And yeah, <laughs> that's the kind of stock we don't mind having, do we? Yeah, it hit its peak in here, and now it has come down to this level in here. And we'll see how well it does going forward. Let's go back to that stock chart again. Click on the stock symbol. And we can see, unless something changes in here, this clean surplus is actually going up. We have net income growth very, very good. The average net income growth of, of any stock is about 13%. Doing well. You can see it had a tough year in here. And then the revenue growth for 2025 is looking very, very good. So net income growth and revenue growth doing very, very well for 2025. So even though it hasn't done that well this year, uh, we're probably going to keep that in our portfolio. The numbers just look too good. And what industry is in? It's in technology. It's in semiconductors. And it's in the QQQs. And those are our three favorite ETFs. And we pick the best stocks out of these ETFs. ETFs to totally do very, very well. As I'm recording this, we're up 41% in the 12 stocks that we picked out of the QQQs. Remember the QQQs, NASDAQ 100. We picked about 12 stocks out of that. We were up 97% in 2023. We're up 41% as I'm recording this for 2024. And we'll see what happens for 2025. Over the past five years, we're up well over 400% in our stocks, outperforming the QQQs by about five times. So if you pick the best stocks in, let's say, the QQQs, which is my favorite portfolio, our 12 stocks. If you pick those best stocks, you will very, very probably outperform the ETF itself over the long term. And as far as we've tested all the portfolios and we have people working that just do the testing and the back testing and of course uh, forming the latest portfolios and we every ETF where we've picked the best stocks we've always outperformed that ETF now I say almost always because there's going to be somewhere out there where our top stocks don't outperform the ETF itself but for the ETF to go up usually those top stocks are leading the way and Clean surplus is how you pick the top stocks. So again, back to our list, clear filters, bring or clear or reset up here. 
and we will get all the stocks and then we can do our sorting. And one of the ways of sorting is how I used to do it in the beginning, 22, 23 years ago. I used to go to the projected 2025s. I used to look at all the top stocks. I used to go to the three years. You see Viper Energy Partners here. Good, good project a return too high when it's when it's this this high you have to be suspect over these and then go back to the three years up oh, hasn't done so well or the years to pay debt are high like this stock in here take two interact over here yeah 16 years to pay off the debt we wouldn't touch it this one over here win resorts 18 years to pay off debt we wouldn't touch it we wouldn't touch mgm resorts either 6.4 years to pay off debt. Workday, we don't like that either, 5.2. So we would rather, now Viper Energy, of course, has low years to pay debt, but the 10-year ROE, the five-year ROE, three-year ROE are negative. So it's one of those stocks that are just all over the place. Come over here, industry, and you can see, and you can sort by industry too, by the way. So if you wanna take all the stocks that are in advertising, you can look at these stocks over here. Uh, one of the stocks that has been fairly good is Trade Desk. We hear about that all the time. Let's just for fun look at that. And how has it done? Ooh, it's done. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> how about five years? We look at five years. And you can hit draw chart either up here or down here. Wow, that's very, very nice. Folks, I think we just found another stock here. We'll go back. Let's look at Trade Desk. Let's look at the entire portfolio here. And we can see that the ROE has, or the net income, which are the clean surplus earnings, has been going up every year. The clean surplus return on equity has been going up. It's above 20%. We look at net income growth for next year, 25%. That's Twice, more than tw about twice as much as the average stock. Revenue growth for the average stock is 7%. This is going to return 13% for 2022. Uh, I'm sorry, for 2025. And gee, we just might consider this. <laughs> so we're going to look at it. And a couple of weeks after I record this, we're coming out with the 2025 portfolio. So then you'll know. So, oh, thanks for being with us, folks, because we might have found a st stock for this coming year. And always, always up here, we want to reset, which is right now it's clear filters, but we're changing this name to reset up here. You always want to reset. And so, folks, that's about it. You have any questions, again, you hit on any of these semi, let's hit on the semiconductor here, and the semiconductor stocks all come up. You look over here at the right, and you can see that they're all semiconductor stocks, and you can go over semiconductors. Same with technology. We like technology. That's our favorite portfolio next to the QQQs, or our top 12 stocks in the QQQs, which include some of the semiconductor stocks. Some of the semiconductor stocks are also in the QQQs. In fact, an awful lot of them are. So that's it for now, folks. If you have any questions or any suggestions, just let us know. And we have those programmers standing by, and they're able to do this. We've changed the whole format of our strategy. Again, you want to reset all the time up here, and then go to the three-year ROE, largest to smallest, and that's a good place to start. And if the three-year ROE is pretty good, you look at the other numbers, and then you go you see how it has performed by going here and then you close this out and you go to the individual stock itself and one thing folks because the numbers might look very very good just like paychecks but the market doesn't care for it and it's not growing now here's another stock one oak that is not putting much money back into itself in order to grow because yeah what's a do pipelines but it's got 6.5 years to pay off debt it's got a lot of debt so we don't care for that it's in the oil and gas distribution and some of these returns that they get have to do with the price of oil and gas and that's changing all the time 
Just my preference, I like to stay away from the petroleum producing any of those oil companies because of the volatility in them. And that's it, because there's thousands and thousands of stocks out there, folks. We don't have to be stuck on any one, and we don't have to take on excess volatility. So back to the stock list. You always want to reset, clear your filters before you start any kind of sorting and looking at these. But boy, oh boy, we've got some of these nice top stocks in our portfolios now. I'm, I'm looking at a lot of them from Novo Nordisk, Netflix down here, Arista Networks, and we come on, we have Amazon, we're looking at Exxon Enterprise very, very closely for 2025, Broadcom, of course, we've got in there, and Paychex we used to have in, but it just doesn't perform as well as the market. It's not a growing company, and it goes on and on. So folks, again, any questions, any suggestions, and uh, just let us know. And I hope this helped you out an awful lot, folks. It's a brand new program or a new strategy of the program. We've had a program for a long time, and this gets updated constantly. Every week, we update some of the stocks as new numbers come out on these particular stocks. So we went to this format just because we can update very easily and consistently update all the time. All right, folks, that's it for now. Hope this didn't make you dizzy, but go look at it. This is where you get the ideas for stock portfolios that outperform the S&P 500. And remember that over time, over any 10-year period, 96% of port professional portfolio managers cannot outperform the S&P 500. And we've done it almost 19 years out of 22, 23 years. And over time, we've outperformed the S&P 500 by 60% a year. And with the new ETFs, we have been really rocking. And as I mentioned, our top stocks in the QQQ is up over 400% over the past five years. So picking the best stocks is the key. There's every portfolio has above average stocks. Every portfolio has below average stocks. We want to pick the better than average stocks. And that's how you outperform everybody else out there, folks. All right. We'll see you back here, our daily letters, and also our videos on the weekend. So if you want to live and walk on this beach like Jimmy Buffett used to just a couple of miles north of here, then you want to learn how to invest even better than Warren Buffett does now. And folks, what we just showed you will show you how to outperform the S&P 500, which outperforms 96% professional money managers over any 10-year period. Folks, good luck, stay safe, and we'll see you back here real soon.